In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So for the last two weeks, thanks entirely to the 2022 Oscars, I've been thinking a lot about hair. And it's Mary's sacrifice of hair that really stands out to me in tonight's gospel lesson. The scene that we're treated to is the dinner party of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, where Jesus is, of course, the guest of honor. And how can he not be? He just raised Lazarus from the dead. I mean, Jesus had done amazing things up till then. You know, he fed the multitudes. He healed people from leprosy. He healed the blind. He did a lot of great things, walked on water. But his latest miracle was reversing death. And people wanted to see what that was about. They came to see Jesus. And they also came to see Lazarus to see, is it true? Should we believe? Not surprisingly, Lazarus's sister Martha is busy cooking and serving. And it's in tonight's reading that I think we learn a little bit more about Martha. Where before we know that she had cooked for Jesus and the disciples, it was a much smaller crowd. And we really don't know how well she did. I mean, for all we know, she could have burnt water. She could have been an awful cook. But this was a prestigious event. And I don't think that they would have trusted just some old water burner to something like this. So we learn actually that Mary was a great cook. She got to do something that she loved, and she did it well. And I like to think that she pulled out all of the stops. She loved Jesus, and she sacrificed her time and talent. Not surprisingly, Mary does something unexpected. Instead of sitting at Jesus' feet as she had grown accustomed to doing, she excused herself, goes into the other room, and comes back with a pound of, per of, a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard. She anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. In her own way, she's showing Jesus that she listened to and understood and believed his teaching and is pulling out all of the stops, loving Jesus in her own way by sacrificing a pound of perfume and messing up her hair in the process. We get to see Judas Iscariot's reaction, the surface level reasonable reaction, complaining that she should have just sold the perfume and used the proceeds to feed the poor. The thing that really strikes me is he's not just complaining to everyone else, He's complaining to Mary, who I'm pretty sure knew exactly how much it cost because um, she paid for it and it was hers to do with as she pleased. But go Judas. I think here we're also so used to hearing Jesus talk in parables that sometimes when he's really clear, we try to like trick ourselves into thinking, well, could Jesus really have meant that? I, I'm not really sure. It's like we're surprised at how direct he has become, but it is really not that surprising. He knows the end of his life is near, and he needs to get to the point, because his disciples may not have been learning all of the lessons that he's taught, and he wants them to know. Leave her alone, he tells Judas. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial alluding to his coming death and burial. According to the commentaries that I read, feet are usually anointed when people are being prepared for burial. Jesus had been telling his disciples that he would be put to death soon, something that most of his disciples couldn't accept, except for Mary. She believed, and the only difference is her anointing was just a few days too early. On Monday, Thursday, we get to celebrate, along with Jesus and his disciples, the time when, before supper, he washes his disciples' feet and teaches them that he wants them to love one another as he's loved them. Here again, 
Mary's action comes a few days early, loving Jesus as she washes his feet with perfume and wipes it with her hair. Still, I think Judas's question is worth considering. I mean, he does kind of have a point. You know, sell the perfume and help the poor. That doesn't really sound that bad. Or splurge it all on one person. What's the better thing to do? But the question that I had thinking about that is, is the one enough? You know, if I have to pick many to one, is the one enough? And the thing is, we've seen Jesus value the one. He doesn't only do mass miracles. He healed many individuals. The woman who was hemorrhaging, the heart of the Samaritan woman, Peter's mother-in-law, Jairus's daughter, and Lazarus, both of them raised from the dead. Even the parable of the prodigal son is for the father who would give up everything to save his son. So yes, one can be enough. But that doesn't mean that we should twist those examples to say that many don't matter. I love the story of Jesus telling Judas to stop bullying this poor woman whose only crime was to take away some of the profit from Judas. <clears throat> he didn't see how he could profit from it. That was his problem. Although, to be fair, Jesus did want Judas to profit from his death, but it wasn't in the way of profit that Judas was used to. And I think sometimes that we're used to thinking about. And we see in the examples of the disciples, Judas wasn't the only one who got it wrong. Yeah, Judas wanted money. The other disciples wanted power. And you have Mary, who just wanted to show love to Jesus. In our Hebrews reading, we learn a little bit more about how that kind of all connects. And we read that with his own blood, he obtained eternal redemption for us, purifying our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. Jesus' death led to his resurrection as well as ours. And this is another one of the reasons that Jesus checks Judas. So that he, so that Mary could continue telling others about Jesus' upcoming death and resurrection. We can't completely discount the good that a year's salary, what the perfume was worth, would bring. But what is it that when you compare that to what Jesus was about to offer? Jesus checks Judas so that we can continue telling others about Jesus' death and resurrection the same one that we share with, with him in Jesus. Jesus checks Judas so that we have an opportunity to pull out all of the stops and begin to love others and God as Jesus would. Amen.